make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. Real quick before the video starts, a quick announcement. I have updated my Patreon page and changed the tiers within it, as I'll be posting content on there regularly. The content which will not go onto my YouTube page, from personal life stories and more Dragon Ball content, for all of you to enjoy. I have changed the tiers and pricing, as times are hard in the world. So for $1, you can have full access to my Patreon page and the content within it, and it goes towards production and support of my channel. So, if you want to check it out and see some content that will not be on YouTube, go check it out for $1 and show your support. Go join my Patreon, now let's get into the what if. What if Goku was born in Ultra Ego? Now real quick before I start the video, I want to explain how this is going to work. Also, before this video officially starts, I also wanted to promote my Patreon, as I will be doing a review video on Patreon talking about the most current manga chapter, and Gohan has finally faced off against his father, Master Ultra Instinct versus Beast Gohan. I'm really excited to talk about it. So if you guys are interested in seeing my take on that, in my opinion, go check it out down below. Now, what if Goku was born in Ultra Ego? Now we have to take a grain of salt with this, as there needs to be some realism, even though it's far out there. If Goku was automatically in Ultra Ego and born in it, he would pretty much Hakai everything and destroy it. This guy could sneeze and it would destroy the entire planet. Goku here has Ultra Ego within him, but as he grows older, he will be able to access this form much quicker than you guys think. So I just wanted to display that so you guys know, so don't attack me in the comments, all right, and understand that I have to start the story somehow, and Goku just can't Hakai the whole entire planet Vegeta. Now anyway, the story would play out the exact same. Goku was born with a very, very, very low power level. Now, of course, this time around, Bardock would sacrifice himself fighting Frieza. Planet Vegeta was still destroyed, and Goku would still be sent to planet Earth, where he would be trained under Grandpa Gohan. For many years, Son Goku would finally be able to grow up on his own, as sadly, Grandpa Gohan passed away. This time around, Goku, when he transformed into a grade 8, destroyed the entire valley and area, but he completely Hakai'd Grandpa Gohan without even knowing that he did. As he reverted back, he never realized. Grandpa Gohan just disappeared. No body, no nothing. Sadly, Grandpa Gohan ceased to exist, as Goku has Hakai'd him. As the years would then pass on, Bulma would still arrive to find the four-star Dragon Ball the same as before. She would offer herself to Goku, as Goku would obviously say no. They would then find the turtle the same as before, giving him seawater taken to the ocean, where they would then meet Master Roshi. Master Roshi would actually be interested in Goku because he senses an incredible pressure within Goku, an incredible power within him. They would then go on their little adventures, facing the Red Ribbon Army. Goku would learn to train under Master Roshi with the likes of Krillin. I know I'm bouncing around this, the Dragon Ball Saga a lot, but relatively, it would go the exact same. But as Goku trains with Roshi, and especially when he learns to train with Korin, this is when he starts learning how to use energy and ki much better than he did before. This is when Goku would accidentally fire his second Hakai ever. It was a Hakai ball that was no bigger than a pebble, but it would almost hit Korin and it would hit his staff and completely obliterate it. Korin was in awe, as he didn't know he had this ability, and Korin doesn't even know what it is, but it's powerful. He would actually take Goku, and this is... Remember, this is when he just started training under Korn, that this is a bit higher than his pay grade. Goku would still have to get the power pull and go up to Kami's lookout. This time around, he would be trained by Kami a lot earlier. Do you mean King Piccolo would still revive himself and, of course, make himself younger, as we all know? At this time around, Goku did not drink the Ultra Divine Water when he fights Demon King Piccolo. Once when Goku fights Demon King Piccolo, remember... He had training under Kami. Now, you can argue that he was given the water anyway to grow even stronger. For what if purposes, let's say that he did, as it would make sense for Kami to still make him go drink the water to grow his power even more. Now, by this point, Goku is starting to know about the Hakai power, 
but he doesn't know how to access it just yet. That will take a lot of training to use his power. His fight with Demon King Piccolo will be actually a bit different. Goku's a little bit stronger than his original self. Goku had a power level of around 260, the same as Demon King Piccolo. Goku this time around would have a power level of actually around 280 to 300, so he's a little bit stronger because he trained with Kami and Popo. And he also had the Ultra Divine Water, so he's a little bit stronger. This time around, when Goku was battling Demon King Piccolo, it was still a very, very close battle. Goku was still stronger and faster than Demon King Piccolo, but Demon King Piccolo had more skill and knowledge against Goku, and more experience. He was able to give the beat down on Goku, but Goku started realizing that something was happening. As then, Goku would begin powering up. Goku's hair would then stand up more, way more, and turn purple. His eyes would then turn yellow. As then a flaming purple aura would then appear, as his muscles would then grow even bigger, Goku felt this rush of this egotistical Saiyan pride that hit him that he never felt before. That he just wants to kill and fight and just get hurt and do what a Saiyan loves to do. As you get as you indulge inside of your egotistical maniac side for Vegeta's friend for Vegeta fans. Demon King Piccolo would then punch Goku, but it would do no damage to him, not even make him flinch. As Goku would then smile like crazy, looking at him, telling him to hit him harder and to actually give him a fight. Demon King Piccolo would then fire his most powerful attack at Goku, but Goku would then sit there and tank the attack like it was nothing. We don't know the exact multiplier for Ultra Ego. We do know that it is relative to Ultra Instinct, where Vegeta was able to catch up to Goku. Now, the power-up might actually be a little bit less of a multiplier than Ultra Instinct. Now, hear me out. It's because the form gives you a big power-up on top of the fact that you grow stronger as the fight goes on, the more damage that you take. So Goku, obviously here, is still far too powerful for Demon King Piccolo. Demon King Piccolo has 0.01% chance, not even that, even less. Now, I want you guys in the comments below to tell me what do you guys think the multiplier would be for Ultra Ego, and I want to see it. And what would the multiplier be at its maximum potential after when like Goku's severely wounded and not before he gets too wounded as that's the weakness of Ultra Ego. If you get damaged too much, you basically collapse because you can't fight no more, even though you want to keep going. That's the only downside of Ultra Ego is you tank damage, but if you take too much damage, you're going to have to fall down. Let me know in the comments down below what you think the multiplier is. I'm really curious to see what you guys have. Let me know and I want to see your arguments for it. I definitely think it's millions of times stronger, easily, because as we know, Saint Scholar, he did an incredible mul mul multiplier list of the Saiyan forms and the God forms. And he was saying that Super Saiyan God, in realistically, is roughly 40 million. Now imagine Ultra Ego, which is hundreds of millions, maybe millions of millions, I don't even know, billions of times stronger than base, which is literally nuts. But for what if purposes? I'm going to start right in the chat, and I want y'all to be mad at me, okay? Goku gets a 100,000 times boost to his power, which is still insane if you think about it, but that's how high I'm making it for right now. So, because of that, since Goku would theoretically get a 100,000 times boost, I want y'all to do the math. How strong would Goku get? Goku as a kid, we have a power level of 30 million. And this is base Ultra Ego. This is not him when he's getting injured and growing much stronger. Because he has a power level of 30 million, he could get hundreds, he can get dozens of times stronger than that. You know, he can get 10 times stronger and get to 300 million. So do you see how busted the form is very quickly? But now cutting back to the what if, Goku would absolutely demolish Demon King Piccolo without a sweat. Demon King Piccolo would still spit out the egg because you gotta have Piccolo in here. And Goku would then actually raise up his hand and he would yell Hakai. As Hakai would then shoot out of his hand and hit Demon King Piccolo, completely erasing him from existence. Now Kami is still alive because Demon King Piccolo spit out Piccolo Jr., so Piccolo Jr. is alive. So Kami's not obliterated, as we all know. Everybody was shocked at Goku's form. Goku would quickly lose the form and he would pass out and almost die from key exhaustion. 
as the form took so much out of him. By this point, Goku would then be taken up to Kami's lookout, and Goku would still keep his tail, as Kami cannot remove his tail because of how powerful he's become. Now, I, I know this is a, a crazy pull, but yes, Ultra Ego and the damage that he took gave him a bigger boost in power. Goku got a 2 times Zenkai because of this. This would mean that his power level is 600. He was only 15 to 16 years old. So, cutting to 2 to 3 years later, Goku would be training intensely under Kami. With Goku actually being stronger, he could actually survive the room in spirit in time longer than before. And with Kami's help, this is a bit out of his pay grade too, as he's never seen power like this, but maybe one person can help Goku. But Kami tries contacting him, and he would agree. This is the same time when Goku would go to the World Martial Art Tournament and meet with his friends first before he goes on another long training, as he doesn't just want to leave all his friends behind. Goku would still meet up for the 21st Budokai Tournament, and he would still meet Bulma, Krillin, and all them the same as before. This is when Piccolo Jr. would then make himself known and challenge Goku as the final contender. Piccolo would easily defeat his opponents in his way. Goku would still meet Chi-Chi the same as before, as his adventures were still the same. And Chi-Chi, again, Goku's a bit silly. Goku thought that marriage was some kind of food, so he would still agree to marry her and hold his promise. But the marriage is going to have to wait, as Goku kind of needs to go train soon after this, but we'll get into this a little bit later. By this point, Piccolo Jr. and Goku would be the final contenders of the round. Goku's far more powerful than Piccolo Jr. Goku had a power level of 600 before he started training, and he went in the room of spirit in time even more. Goku got dozens of times stronger, and it makes sense as to why, especially the Room of Spirit in Time is 10 times gravity, which some people seem to forget that. So if Goku's training in that gravity as well, he's only going to grow stronger. Now, just for crazy purposes, Goku got roughly 5 times stronger, as it would kind of make sense, you know, since he wasn't in there for the full time. But even if so, he has a power level of over 3000, so he's easily more powerful, easily more powerful than Piccolo Jr. You can argue that Piccolo Jr. is a little bit more powerful because Piccolo Jr. is training for a higher goal against Goku. He can maybe even be in the 400s to 500s. It would not be enough to defeat Goku. Goku would have easily defeated Demon King Piccolo. And yes, I said the Demon King because in Dragon Ball, Piccolo calls himself the Great Demon King. But Piccolo Jr., either way, or Piccolo, would still lose no matter what. Goku was going to go off to go train under King Kai, as he learned his name, he would then stay with Chi-Chi for the next few months to get married, blah blah, and move in, but Goku would finally have to leave as Chi-Chi would understand. Chi-Chi would become pregnant and have Gohan, the same as before. Goku would be the father that went to go get the milk and not be around for a little while, as Goku would then arrive to go see King Yemma. King Yemma was confused why a living being was here, and why is he here? He then states that King Kai purposely wanted him to come see him, as King Kai heard about Goku saying Hakai. Because remember, Kami was there, and he had this purple energy that just completely destroyed and vaporized whatever was in front of him. King Kai knows this, and this terrifies him as he has to see this. So, because of this, this is when, of course, Goku would then go run the snake way the same as before. Now, this time around, Goku being much stronger than he was, and I can even say that he could fly at this point, as never really went into that Goku could fly. I guess he just got strong enough to do it which doesn't make any sense, but Goku can fly. He would still arrive within a few months' time of running, the same as before, a month or so, and he would meet King Kai, who would tell King Kai a joke to train him. King Kai wants to see that power. King Kai would then hold up a random piece of metal that he would find, and he tells Goku to, to do that Hakai thing that apparently he can do. King Kai thinks he's bluffing, as there's only one being that he knows that can do that. It destroyed his planet, after all, because he defeated him at video games. Because of this, Goku would then say Hakai, and a small tennis ball sized Hakai would then fly out of his hand and completely destroy the metal cube that he made. This would baffle King Kai. He then wants to see Goku's form, as he asked, can he go into it? Goku states that he can, but he gets a bit wild whenever he does, and it drains a lot of energy. King Kai just wants to see it, as Goku would then transform into Ultra Ego. King Kai was blown back by this incredible power that Goku had. And this is definitely God energy. This is definitely Destroyer. King Kai would then tell Goku about the 12 universes. He would tell Goku way more information than he ever did. 
telling him about only one other being on this universe can use the power that he showed, and his name is Lord Beerus. Goku wants to fight this Lord Beerus guy. He sounds super strong. King Kai would instantly say, no, 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 you don't understand. I sense how powerful your form is. It's very, very, very strong. You're possibly one of the strongest beings in the universe easily. But to him, you're nothing but just a small little grain of sand to an ocean compared to Beerus. Goku would be kind of let down. He still wants to fight him anyway. He can learn power from him. But because of this, Goku would then begin his training. As King Kai would help Goku learn key energy more and do everything in his power to help Goku control this Ultra Ego form better. So much so that he's back against the wall. So he would then use the help of the three other Kais who control the other sides, the East, the North, and the South, as to help them out in the West to also all join together. And even the Grand Kai can all join together to help Goku learn this power. As Goku has a few years, Goku would train for up to two to three years with King Kai. Now, we know that Goku got 18.8 .8 times stronger after a few months of training, after about three. So you guys can go do the math if you want. I'm just gonna highball it. But in reality though, if Goku got 18.8 .8 times stronger with three months of training, realistically, he basically, he would get four times stronger than 18. So that would basically, basically mean that he gets 72 times stronger the two years that he was gone. So in reality, he, within two years of training, he would get 144 times boost to his power. That's also minusing the fact that he's being trained by other Kais. So, timing this, of course, by 3,000, his base power level would be 432,000, which is almost as powerful as First Form Frieza, and he's didn't even start the Saiyan Saga yet. Goku, by this point, can access Ultra Ego normally, as his body can handle it way more, to where now he can access it like it's nothing. Goku has also learned more about the Hakai abilities, and he also knows the weaknesses of this form, that if he gets too crazy into it, he can injure himself too much and lose the power, so he has to keep his mind in check. Goku would then return home, find out that he has a son, and disappear for the next 20 years, but all jokes aside, he would then go see Gohan and spend time for the next three years. As three years would then pass, Goku would still keep a light training to keep himself in shape, as he would then see his brother Raditz arrive on Earth. Goku would still be at Kami's house, showing off Gohan to everybody else after meeting for about five years. Raditz would still make himself known. This time around, when Raditz kicked Krillin away into the building, times would change. As once when Raditz grabbed Gohan, this is where something would change. Even before he would grab Gohan or even try to, Goku would then instantly grab his arm and throw Raditz away into the water. Raditz would then be pushed with so much force with that pull that he would then land on an island nearby. Goku would then fly off and fight Raditz. But because of this, Goku would then showcase why Raditz has no chance. Raditz would then laugh and say that you just got a lucky shot in. My power level is 1,500. Goku would begin powering up. As Raditz was in shock as he was saying out loud that his power level is well almost 24,000 before his scouter would then explode. On the other end, Vegeta heard that. He talked to Nappa on the comp, saying that, did you hear that? Raditz yelled out that someone had a power level of 24,000. Nappa would think it's a big lie, but Vegeta's actually curious that he went to go find another Saiyan and he has that high of a power level. Maybe a scouter's busted. But maybe they should go over there and see what happened, since his, Raditz is not replying anymore, which means that he must have been killed. They would not be interested in the Dragon Balls as they don't know about it, nor does Frieza know about the Dragon Balls in reality because they never stated it. Now, though, because of this fact, Frieza would never go to Namek initially, he would still be ruling over planets. Goku would still fight Raditz the same as before, but this time around, Raditz has no chance. Raditz knows that his brother can easily kill him with a single punch. He would then beg for mercy. Remember, Raditz is a coward. If Raditz has no chance against somebody, he's going to give up. What else can he do? He would then beg for mercy and apologize, and he would then explain himself and what he's doing. Goku would then laugh and say, okay, no problem, as Raditz was shocked with how forgiving he was. Goku states just as long as you don't hurt anybody or destroy the planet or anything, you're fine with us. Raditz would then complain and apologize to the Z fighters for what he did. And he would then explain who Nappa and Vegeta is, and he would state that with your power level, you might be able to beat them, but they can also turn into great apes. 
This is when Goku would actually reveal his tail. As he says, what do you mean? Raditz thought he didn't have one because it was hidden behind his pants. So, Goku, Raditz would say, well, never mind then. As Goku would state that, well, do you think those guys would be coming over here then? Raditz doesn't know, and he estimates that even if they did, it would take well over a year plus for them to even arrive. During this time, a year would then pass as they were still training on Earth. Raditz has settled down near Goku's home, and he actually got nice with Launch. So Launch actually likes Raditz, and they kind of got together. As that's a nice little ship, I know everybody does this. Vegeta and Nappa would then appear and make themselves known by completely obliterating a city. Goku would then fly in and challenge to fight both of them by himself in the rocky wasteland. Vegeta would then agree and Nappa would agree as they would then fly off. Now Goku saw what Nappa did and destroyed the whole entire town, but it was too late to get to them. By this point in time, Nappa would then go up first and scan his power level, seeing that he only had a power level of 2000, which is nothing. Nothing to him, nothing to Vegeta. Goku would then begin powering up, as his power level would then shoot up to 20,000, which Vegeta would then crush his scour alongside Nappa, thinking that it's busted. Goku would deliver a single elbow to his stomach, similar to what he did to Raccoon, and kill Nappa with a single strike. Vegeta was utterly shocked by the power that Goku had. Maybe he's able to spike his power or something. Vegeta thinks that it's a fluke and Nappa just dropped his guard. He would then start his fight with Son Goku. The fight would be intense, as Goku, again, was not even trying. Vegeta had no chance against Goku, and but Goku wants to see what Vegeta's capable of, as he knows he's different from that other guy. Way stronger than his brother is. Raditz would be on the far side, watching from the background, as he's not going to get into that, but he's very happy to see that the Prince of All Saints is getting a taste for his medicine, as he would actually cheer his brother on a little bit. Goku and Raditz's relationship has grown a lot during that year, as Raditz pushed past that silliness aside, and he's proud of his younger brother. Vegeta was getting absolutely demolished by Goku, and Vegeta would try his Gallic gun and everything else, it would not work. As he can't try the fake moon, because the darn Saiyan can transform into it as well, he has a tail. Vegeta ran out of options. Vegeta would then try to attack his friends, which Goku would easily deflect the attack, and deliver a powerful blow to Vegeta, so powerful that it would blow the top armor off his body. And this, Goku thought it would kill Vegeta. As Vegeta would then fall over, Goku would then walk away and say that it's done. But to his surprise, Vegeta would actually get up, which would shock Goku with how his how durability and how he was not giving up. Goku respected that with Vegeta. Goku would then tell Vegeta to just leave his planet, to never return. Vegeta would then tell him that you should, you will regret sparing my life, as he would then leave in his spaceship, flying away. Now, because of this, they never spoke of the Dragon Balls because nobody officially died in the Z group, so no one officially died, and everybody would stay on Earth happily ever after. But until we all know, when Vegeta arrives, word would quickly get around that Vegeta lost somebody who easily defeated him in Nappa. This would reach Zarbon and Dodoria, who would tell Frieza about it. Frieza would actually be a little bit interested because there is a Saiyan that powerful that he was able to defeat Vegeta that easily. And not to mention, too, maybe he can be recruited. So Frieza would actually send out a few of his subordinates, Zarbon and mainly Dodoria, out with, with a couple henchmen to Earth to try and go recruit Goku. They would quickly be met with destruction as the last thing that Zarbon heard from Dodoria was that this Saiyan had a power level of over 40,000 and he would be destroyed. Zarbon would then tell Frieza about it, which would then spike his interest. Frieza would slowly start heading his way there. He would then send the Ginyu Force over to the planet first, as then, Frieza was now interested. This Saiyan was incredibly powerful. Maybe he can recruit him or not. He can finally end the Saiyan race, as he was promised to do so by Beerus. And that is it for this one, if you guys thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think, and if you guys want me to finish this series, I need to see a lot of likes and a lot of views on this. So anyway, thank you all so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to check me out on Patreon for my new review video. I really appreciate all the support, and I'll talk to you all later.